Close your eyes, focus on the breath. Know when it's coming in, know when it's going out. And give all your attention to the breath. Other things may be going on, but you don't have to pay them any attention. You can lift your mind above them. There's noise making disturbances, or there's pain in your knees, or whatever. It really doesn't really harm the mind at all. This is called lifting the mind above its circumstances, and it's an important principle in the Buddha's teaching. Today we're celebrating Makabuja, commemorating a day when 1,250 arahants came to see the Buddha. It all happened. There was no previous discussion that they were going to meet, but all they all came. And so the Buddha taught them some basic principles. This was very early in his teaching career. And so it taught them the basic principles that they should use when they go out to teach others. And his final principle was lifting the mind, making the mind heightened, committing yourself to heightening the mind. He said, that is the Buddha's teachings. And what this means is you don't let your mind get overwhelmed by greed, aversion, delusion. You don't let it get over overwhelmed by pain. You don't let it get overwhelmed by anything unskillful at all. You lift your mind above those things. So you don't become a slave. You, the mind becomes a master. You lift it above the body in the sense that, okay, there may be pains in the body, but that's not really the issue. The issue is whether the mind can be at peace. And when you train it well, you find that even though there are pains in the body, illness in the body, even though the body's dying, the mind can still be at peace once it's well trained. And as for things outside, people come and they can curse you, but you can lift your mind above that. They can praise you and you can lift your mind above that, too. You have to watch out. If you're looking for praise all the time, then criticism is going to really hurt. But if you realize that praise and criticism come from other people, and it may be true and it may be false, and you can benefit both ways. If it's true, okay, then you've learned something. If it's false, you've learned something as well. If they criticize you for something you didn't do, or they criticize something that really is, it was really something good that you did, okay, you realize, okay, that's what that person is like. You've learned something about that person. And the same with praise. The praise may be false, and you say, okay, this person is praising me for some reason I don't really trust, and so watch out. And if they're praising you for something good, you remind yourself that this is an encouragement to keep doing more of the same thing and do it better. So you don't just sit there lapping up the praise and lapping up the criticism. You think about it and you say, okay, I've got to lift my mind above these things so it's not a slave. This is why we practice developing meditation, developing mindfulness and alertness, developing concentration here on the breath, because it gives you a place where you can lift your mind above the world around you. So you don't have to get overwhelmed by the things, overwhelmed by the events of the day, overwhelmed by other people's skillful or unskillful behavior. That's just part of living in this human realm. People be skillful sometimes, unskillful other times. It's a normal thing. You look at your own behavior. Have you been 100% skillful yourself? Well, no. What are you going to expect out of other people then? And when you think in these ways, that helps lift the mind. Even if your concentration isn't all that strong, you can still lift the mind above the events of the day, and that way you develop a sense of composure, which is one way of developing a heightened mind. The other way, of course, is develop concentration so that you find your own internal sense of well-being. It doesn't require having to feed on things outside. And then you can look at the world with an objective eye, and the mind is lifted up above the world. And when you lift it up, then you can really say things for what they are. When you're down on the level of the ground, you can't see very far, but when the mind is lifted up, you can see a lot more broadly and a lot more comprehensively. You suffer less, the people around you suffer less as well. So you want to practice this practice of lifting the mind above its irritations, lifting it above its disturbances, and at the same time lifting above anything good or bad outside, so you don't become a slave to good and bad things outside. When you're doing that, you're following in line with the Buddha's teachings. And the whole purpose of his teachings is to help people overcome suffering. He didn't say these things just because he wanted people to obey him. He said, these are the principles for true happiness. So if we want true happiness, we should give them a try to see if he knew what he was talking about.